Hi folks, I'm Ignati Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. We are at Star Lounge Coffee Bar. We just left an evening screening of The Visit. Film Club is brought to you by the new Windows 10. Imagine a future with no passwords where web pages are meant to be scribbled on and shared and devices will listen to you and talk back. The future starts now for all of us. Get started today, Windows 10. So as film critics in 2015, mm -hmm. like a, a pretty common part of our job now is reviewing found footage horror movies. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, there's probably, there's, there's probably one a month at this point. When you have to do that all the time, when you have to find new ways to write about found footage, I, I think that you start to appreciate little things. And tonight we saw the new M. Night Shyamalan film, The Visit, mm -hmm. which is a found footage horror movie. And one thing I really appreciated about it is that it does not attempt to disguise the fact that it's a found footage. No, and he, and he plays with it in a way right. that's, I wouldn't call it sophisticated, but in a way that's self-reflexive, mm -hmm. right? I mean, usually with, with found footage horror, you get this problem, it's that question of why is right. the camera still rolling? Why are these people filming this? Why don't you stop and run for your life? <laughs> yeah, you know? and here, he, there's an interesting framing device. What we're watching is footage shot by his 15-year-old with the help of her 12-year-old brother. Mm -hmm. They're going to their grandparents' house. They've never met their grandparents before. The grandparents have been estranged from their mother since before the kids were born. The 15-year-old, she wants to make a documentary about mm -hmm. this, about meeting her grandparents, and also she wants her grandmother to reconcile with her mother. Mm -hmm. So she's intentionally trying to make, first of all, this personal documentary, but she also has these kind of ambitions and pretensions. She's trying to make something that looks good. You she's know, just sort of young, pretentious film student, yeah. essentially. Um, you know? and that, but that grants Shyamalan a lot of license to film it in at least semi-sophisticated ways because you have a character who is literally trying yeah, was, to frame things. Yeah, right. who's actively trying to, to make things look good. Right. So he weaves it in. It's shot by the cinematographer of The Wrestler. I yes, think. by Maurice Alberti, who's a documentary yeah. cinematographer. And so it has a much more artificial look, I think, than mm -hmm. the average found footage horror film mm -hmm. does. One of my fears and my trepidations about uh, M. Night Shyamalan doing a found footage horror movie mm -hmm. is that that format can really rob certain filmmakers of their formal gifts. Because what you have is you have a, you have a filmmaker who knows what they're doing with the camera sort of playing dumb. But he is, he is playing dumb, but he's, yeah. he's playing dumb in a more playful way. There's a sense of levity that pervades this. I know you had a little bit of a problem with Yeah, I mean, you had mentioned here. good jokes, but I've always found Shyamalan's sense of humor uh, is... Uh, he's a cornball. I he's mean, a total cornball. He's, it's he's, sort of he's, hopelessly he's a corny yeah. <laughs> sense of humor, you know? You know what it reminded me of is it's like a very, very good Goosebumps book. <laughs> and I, I don't mean that. that pejoratively. And this levity is usually being used to offset the scares, I think, as you, right. you pointed out. And I think that's a problem occasionally, though. I mean, and, and I, I understand why he does it, but there are moments when he will stage a, a pretty solid scare or a moment that's pretty unsettling and then undercut it with a laugh line. There's one that pops to mind, especially where they open the door to their bedroom and outside is their grandmother and she's stark naked and she's clawing at one of like the doors. Like a cat. Like yeah, a cat, yeah. yeah. Um, which a potentially ridiculous image that they, they pull off pretty well, slam the door, the kid makes a joke about how he's he's blind now or mm -hmm. something. And as a punctuation, I think it completely kills the discomfort of that scene. And by the way, such an annoying kid. But he's, <coughs> I know, I know. He's you, a good actor, but he's a rapping kid. But he's supposed to be annoying. You're he supposed is. to be he in is. the perspective of the sister. What could be more annoying in a little brother <laughs> than his insistence on rapping. rapping everything? So let me ask you a question. Okay. Very, very basic question. Do you think this is scary? I found it occasionally very effective. I, it's sort of a cop-out mm -hmm. answer. I don't think it's terrifying, but I do think that some of the stuff, particularly the final stretch, is quite effective. Now this film does contain a rare sighting of the very famous Shyamalan twist. That's right, a pretty effective one actually, although we cannot discuss it. Why not? Can't ruin it for people, come on man. But isn't that our job, ruin movies for people? <laughs> and it's the first twist ending he's done since The Village. That's true, and it's interesting that one of the big cases against Shyamalan from his detractors is that he's just this twist machine, but it's really not that common in his films. It's true, and it's odd because the, what you could call the canonical Shyamalan films, the ones mm -hmm. that people like, right? The success, that are wise, that are wise, signs, uh, maybe uh, Unbreakable, yeah, although that has its detractors too. All have twist endings. Mm -hmm. It's the ones without that usually get people up in arms. Yep. Now, you're quite a big M. Night Shyamalan fan. I wanted to say apologist, but I'm, I'm not going to say that. You're a fan. 
I guess you mean that I'm right, yes, <laughs> in that sense. So, I mean, you'll go to bat for The Happening. Of course I will, because it's a tribute to drive-in B-movies. I think the problem with The Happening is maybe that it doesn't signal that strongly enough. People tend to read that film's intentional humor, because there's, some, there's plenty of intentional humor mm -hmm. in the film, as somehow unintentional. I think it's also because he is a little bit of a he is a little bit of a cornball. I've always sort of subscribed to the the, the, the popular opinion that he's a much better director than he is a writer. Uh, the Sixth Sense, notwithstanding, mm -hmm. I think he's a very economical storyteller, and I think he can be very graceful. He's also very in control of style in a way that I think very few major filmmakers really have been in the last fifteen to twenty years. What I always think of is the is the climax of signs, which he almost repeats the trick from in this film, where you, you have this, the final confrontation in the living room in signs, and you basically see nothing. You're just seeing things get knocked over, you're seeing through a glass of water, but it's put together in this way that it still sort of works as this action scene. Mm -hmm. I think of two, uh, two shots from his career that have always stuck out to me, particularly when I want to talk about him as mm -hmm. somebody who, who can be very adventurous for the way he constructs a scene. Um, I think about, th there's a scene in Unbreakable with the young version of Samuel Jackson's character, him as a child, that he shoots entirely from the reflection of a television set. Mm -hmm. And there's a set piece in The Happening, which I, which I don't think is a very good film, but has some spectacular moments. And there's a scene in that where we're seeing sort of a chain of suicides with a gun, yeah. and we're following the gun. Okay. Yeah, and it, it all happens out of frame. We just, all, see, yep. the, we just see the gun drop yeah. and people picking it up. And it's almost from the, the, the gun's perspective, sort of. That's one of his big talents as a stylist. He's very good at suggesting what is outside the frame. Mm -hmm. And he's very good at engaging the viewer's imagination.